Well, digestive system. Digestive you system. Go for that. I want to see what this fish was eating. This this Me fish too. looks looks like she's been busy in a very busy life in the pond. Okay, so I'm thinking about the digestive system as one long tube. Okay. So, um, what did you have for breakfast today? I had some toast with an egg on it. Some toast with an egg <laughs> on it, and so it. Um, you ate the toast and it went inside of your mouth mm -hmm. and then down your esophagus and Ooh. down here until it got into your stomach, stomach. Yeah. and where it starts to break down. Mm -hmm. So you get stomach acid and it starts to break down your food. What do you think your toast looks like right now? Ooh, <laughs> now it probably looks like toast colored soup. <laughs> Maybe toast colored soup. Okay. So let's see, we're going to kind of follow that same path okay. in the trout. So it's going to be eating um, you know, eating its prey, eating its food, uh, through its mouth. So we could just kind of take a look, quick look. Um, okay. So if I was like a little fish and I got eaten by this trout, mm -hmm. I would go, and they don't chew their food, right? They, they just do swallow not. it whole. Yep. Okay. They swallow like it whole. Like so I can see, you know, when the food enters the mouth, it's going to come down here through this tube, oh, wow, that's great. through the esophagus okay. right here. And it's going to go down into its stomach. So let's see if we can figure out exactly which part is the stomach. So we've got the esophagus coming down into the stomach, which is kind of like a bumpy bag. Okay. And so um, I'm guessing that this is the stomach right here. Mm -hmm. And so cool. kind of. So it's going to come in to the stomach and it moves around. Um, this one's going to, the stomach is going to break down the food. And this one right here is called the pyloric cica. And so we've got our little diagram here too. Ah. Pyloric cica, the feathery noodley stuff coming off the side. And that helps to digest um, and absorb a lot of the nutrients. So oh, it works okay. kind of like our small intestine a little bit. Oh, cool. Okay. So, it, wow, look at so those once all those colors. little nutrients are broken so tiny, then they can get into the bloodstream through the pyloric zika. Exactly. Kind of like our small intestine. Like yep. That. And then from the pyloric zika, it's going to go down through the intestine and the intestine is going to create the waste. So, okay. um, and then uh, the waste will come out of the vent right here. So cool. we can think of this as one long tube, okay. esophagus, stomach, absorbed through the pyloric zika and then down through the intestine. So I'm going to make one cut right here and okay. one cut right here. And maybe we could take out this whole um, digestive tract. Okay, so I think we've got, wow. once I remove the whole digestive tract, it really helps me think about this as just one tube. Okay. So I would like to look inside of the stomach yeah. and see what it's been eating. So what do you think is, I mean, hmm, would it, I mean, this is a big fish. Would it have a little fish inside of it? It, I don't know, maybe. Okay. Ah, or let's see, I guess there's only one way to find out. Okay. So we're going to do a stomach content analysis here. Ah, right. um, when I worked on fishing boats, I would also have to remove stomachs of fish. Mm -hmm and send those in bags to scientists in the lab. And they would okay. do studies about um, the, you know, the prey of different different fish. Okay, so, so there's another reason to do dissections. It's like, if you want to know what fish are actually eating, you can look inside their stomach and mm -hmm. see what's going on. I see, okay. That seems important. So like, if you have an endangered fish and you want to protect it, if you don't know what it's eating, then you don't know how to protect its food source. Like you need to actually exactly. discover yeah. what it's actually doing. So cool. this oh my fish's stomach is completely empty. <laughs> oh, it was it's like not eating anything. For breakfast. Did wow. not eat anything for breakfast. That is wild looking. It looks it looks like kind of like a deflated balloon. Like like I could tell like maybe it could expand, right? Like if it ate a whole lot, mm -hmm. that would stretch out to be really tight. But right now it looks really like wrinkled and kind of um, pulled in like it's contracted yeah wow that is impressive looking inside yeah the inside of the stomach very cool okay 
So this fish was kind of on its way out when okay. we caught it this morning. Oh, okay. hatchery. So this is kind of interesting to me. We were wondering if we'd find some wood chips in their stomachs, actually. Oh, okay. Because we noticed some people trying to give the trout some wood chips. Ah. But um, it's yeah, also interesting chips. to me that it's completely empty. Mm. Maybe the fish uh, was realizing that it was kind of nearing the end of its life. Yeah. Um, just not eating anymore. Yeah. So the reason that we took this one today was because it looked like it was getting ready to go who was on its way out oh, so end of its life, and no, nothing in the stomach so it's really interesting to me wow that is so cool that was really impressive the pylorex zika is really and it looks cool right human stomachs when you see like you know a drawing they're kind of simple looking this is very cool and complicated yeah little fish very interesting digestive system yep something that only fish have wow cool all right so, oh, nervous system. The nervous time? system. Oh my god, I'm my getting favorite. nervous uh, <laughs> <laughs> to look at. But let's do it. This was really cool. So basically, we've got the circulatory system, right? Kind of the delivery system, right? Taking the waste, taking the food, taking the oxygen on all over the body. You got the digestive system. That way, you get all the nutrients into the body, eating things. But then the nervous system, to me, seems like the. It's like the brains of the operation, like the control center, <laughs> it's sending all the signals to make things work. Because uh, we always talk about the brain, you know, being so important. Um, but I guess, how does a brain talk to everything else? If the brain's the control center, it's kind of stuck in the skull, right? Like it's protected because it's so important. Um, like if I threw, <laughs> if I threw these tweezers at you, <laughs> how would your brain know they're coming at you? It may not in time. <laughs> it may not in time, it's just doink, like, what the heck? <laughs> I guess it would be right. It, it has to be something has to tell the brain it's out here, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's an interesting question. Is like, what is? I guess that's that goes back to the senses, right? Your different senses are what so, tells your brain what's happening. Yeah, and so I uh, would see the tweezers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flying through the air towards my face. Yes. And how would my eye tell my brain? Yeah. That I needed to move out of the way ah yeah so it's gotta How it's gonna that? have to send a signal and you know this is old school it's not wireless here there's no bluetooth in the body so <laughs> <laughs> it's literally connected with a wire or a nerve cell so there's these very long cells that are kind of like an electric wire and uh and the eyeball is connected to the brain by a whole bunch of those cells called the optic nerve so it literally would send a little electric jolt up those cells into your brain where there's other nerve cells and they would be like whoa hey tweezers coming <laughs> Okay, so now your brain knows it's flying at you. What can your brain do about it? It's still stuck in that skull. I guess my brain says, what the heck, Andy? And then <laughs> it's got to talk to my arm so that oh. I can maybe grab the tweezers in midair. Catch them, yep. Yeah. And then throw them back at me. Yes. I think, yeah, okay. Yeah. So so basically what you're saying is, so that there's nerves that go into the brain, but there's also nerves that come out of the brain and go to things like the muscles, right, in your arm, and that tells them to move. And then you can do things. Yeah, totally. So you're right. So the brain's like taking in information from the senses and sending out instructions through nerve cells all over the body. So the easiest part, I mean, those nerve cells are really tiny. And the easiest thing to see for us is usually some of those sensory organs. So the eyeball would be really cool to dissect out and to see what's going on in there. Ooh, you want to do that? Yes. Okay. So there's our eye. And you can see the this dark part in the middle, that's called the pupil. So like when we, you look in someone else's eye and you look into their pupil, it's dark because the eye is hollow and that's a hole. So you're actually seeing to the back of the eye and that's where all the cells are that pick up that light and send the information to the brain. It's actually called the retina. So if you look at our little cross section here, if the eye was looking this way towards this little person, the light coming off that person goes through a lens. So just kind of like in the camera, there's a little clear part here in the opening, and that focuses the light onto the very back of this hollow eyeball where the retina is. And that's where we get the information coming to the brain so it knows what's going on there. So there's our eye. Um, should we go inside yeah. the eye? That's amazing. Let's uh, yeah. look at it under the microscope. Oh yeah, first. let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Right. And then can you see the nerve on the back side? I feel like it might just be, oh, oh right maybe there. that's it. Oh my gosh, there it is. Ah, okay, so all this other white stuff is something else. That definitely looks like nerve cells there. 
Wow. Yeah. So that's the connection to the brain. Here in the microscope, you can see the eye, and there's the pupil right in the middle. It's the open space that lets the light into the eye. And on the back side of the eye, you can see this sort of white spot in the middle. That's the optic nerve. So that's hundreds and thousands of neurons coming from the eye that send the signal to the brain. So theoretically, <laughs> if what I'm saying is true, then inside there should be a lens. Ooh, that would be see cool. The lens? So just like glasses, you know, focus the light to help people see the eye has a lens of its own. Um, so if you really need to look like that, and the interesting thing in our little model you can see is just the way light moves, it actually flips things around. So the back of your eye, picking up that light, it sees the world upside down. Mm. But your brain is smart enough to kind of remove, you know, just flip that image around. So that mm. way, you know, if then something's flying at you instead of grabbing in the wrong direction, you would know exactly where it is. So, so the brain's pretty smart. Um, but this, let's see, but I think it's not hollow. There's no air in there. So there is fluid in there, some retinal fluid. So we'll have to watch out for a little extra juice coming at us here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Oh yeah, hold that up in the camera. That's beautiful in the, in the light. Wow, so there's the lens. Okay, so this is, I mean, it really does just look like a marvel. But that is what's focusing the light, yeah, allowing it to wow. see in focus so they can see predators coming, it can see prey. Um, it's just a really cool part of how the eyeball works. Wow. That is cool. Okay, so now I've got the rest of the eye here. Yeah, <laughs> let's say we got it. We got our eye, we got our lens. Wow, it feels. Yeah, what does it feel like? It feels kind of squishy. It feels just a little bit squishy. Okay, so maybe it's got a little bit of liquid in it too yeah. it's not like glass inside per se it feels squishy but something um harder inside wow okay it's maybe like a hard marble structure inside that's so cool well i can see a little bit holding it up i can see like the light of the sunlight is getting focused like a magnifier on my on my finger over here like as i move mm. the lens it's kind of focusing things and if i hold it up and i look at <laughs> and look at the world out there. It's really hard to see. Let's see. I guess this is a 3D camera. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's wow. awesome, though. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's our little... Let's see. If I hold it up in its shadow, will it have... I guess it's got this little bright light there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's being focused. Cool. Wow. That's super cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's... Put that right there by our eye. So yeah, so the brain. <laughs> Do we want to go after the brain? Let's try it. Okay. So where would the brain be? What would you? So we were talking about how the eye is sending a signal to the brain. Where do you think mm -hmm. the brain is? In well, there? I'm gonna feel on the top of its head. Okay. And this part feels mm -hmm. soft. Okay. Like muscle, but right about here, it feels hard, like, um, like maybe that's where the skull is. Okay. Cool. And I know that my skull protects my brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that the fish's brain is right in here somewhere okay. underneath that skull. Cool. Yeah, what do, what do you think? I think like right dead on, I feel like maybe there's some white stuff, but it might have been there's like blood vessels on mm -hmm. top. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, got to be part of it right there. Yeah. But it's hard to tell. I don't yeah. know. Okay, and, I could cut away some more if we wanted to. Like keep going backwards a little bit. Yeah, see, I don't know if that is part of it. <laughs> you see that in there? Oh, yeah, that looks really cool. So that's got to be one of the, they've got different lobes in their brain. Oh, wow. And so there's so different pieces. Mm -hmm. Cool. Here, maybe I'll, I'll bring it up closer to the camera. So you're saying. Let's see. So you're saying this this cool white thing right here, it looks very delicate mm -hmm. right in the middle. Right it's probably there. part of it there. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest wow. lobes in the brain is uh, the optic lobe. So okay. having to do with vision. And so that could be what we're looking at right here. Wow. That is awesome. That is right there. Oh, it's going to be part of the nerves going to the eye? Yeah. Wow. So if the optic part of the brain of a fish is big, would you expect that it relies on its 
sense of sight a lot more than if you looked at a cave fish that has no eyes mm -hmm. that part might be smaller mm -hmm. okay so it just needs the power to process all that information that's so cool and okay. it kind of reinforces itself too so mm -hmm. there have been studies where they look at the size of that optic lobe uh -huh. um, in fish that have been raised in an environment with no rocks and no um features you know maybe just a uh -huh. glass aquarium nothing inside of it and that part of their brain is smaller because they're not having oh, to wow. constantly navigate uh, things in their environment so, oh wow. so throughout their life if it's not getting used the nervous system is not growing in that normal way wow, wow. that's amazing cool Very cool wow well we've done it we <laughs> we made it to the brain <laughs> that is just amazing Cool. Well, I'm I'm really so thankful that we were able to you know, get to do a dissection on this fish. It was really amazing to see that. Me too. And I thank hope, you, fish. Yeah, thank you very much, fish. This is amazing. And I hope, you know, everybody at home is able to see something new that they've never seen before. Wow, these trout really are adapted for life in the water. Andy, do you remember two external structures that are unique to fish that help it live in the water? What did you see on the outside of the fish that land animals do not have? I definitely noticed the scales that it uses for protection and the gills that it uses to breathe were really cool to look at. I didn't know there were so many gill arches. Katie, can you remember two of the internal structures of the fish that help it survive underwater? Something that's different than humans? Let's see, I remember seeing the pyloric cica that looks kind of noodly, and humans do not have one of those. And I also remember seeing the swim bladder, even though it was popped, it wasn't filled with air anymore, and I know for sure I don't have one of those. But I also noticed a lot of structures that the fish had that I also have, like the heart and the liver and the intestine. Right, even the things you could see from the outside, like nostrils and the mouth and the eye, and even the lens inside the eye, that was really cool to see. But the most fascinating thing I saw today was the brain. I really wanna learn more about the different parts of the brain and how they work together to make the brain function. What about you, Katie? Those eggs were really fascinating to me. I couldn't believe how many eggs we saw and how they fill up the entire body cavity. It was really cool to see an egg under the microscope. And I saw a couple little drops look like oil drops. And that made me wonder what exactly the inside of the egg makes it that orange color. Thanks for joining us today on our fish dissection and learning more about how different organ systems work together as a team to help fish survive. What's something new you learned about anatomy today and what questions do you have? What would you want to explore next time if you did another fish dissection? Next time you're out fishing, you can share what you learned here today with your family and friends. And also the fact that we have a lot more in common with fish than you might think. See you next time.